Greetings, unsettled souls. Oh, welcome to the correct views. If you hear that song, you know what time it is, right? The Dunce Cap of the Month Award. I want to give a shout out to TJRSMC on YouTube that posted that. Friends, this has to be, and for those of you that don't know what you're about to see, get a bag of chips, preferably organic, and get ready to laugh. Get ready to laugh a lot. Because we're going to look at the stupidest people. Many of them are our so-called leaders. Some of the stupidest people in the entire world are all on one show, and you're going to get to hear it. Friends, this came to me as a potential Dunce Cap of the Month award winner, this first one. I didn't because the behind-the-scenes queen, Christelle, has... She likes the idea. Now, I think this has to be the worst idea ever. I'm about to say the uh, S word, because this is, uh, well, they've got a star on it. I'll, I'll do shoot, in case I end up on Neopa. Shop and shoot. Amazon's bold new ad campaign, online retailer apparently vying for the worst ad campaign ever. I would say yes, beyond a shadow of a doubt. Who, Christella, who do you know that uses a, the, the phone? You use the phone while you're in the bathroom. No. Don't ever borrow Christelle's phone. It, it really, I mean, you you like you know people that would do this. Probably. There's people that might get a dunce cap. Friends, listen to this. Adam Alan Salaz, Adan Salazar. Easy for me to say. Online retail giant Amazon has an ad campaign in store for captive audiences who use public restroom stalls malls across the nation because well, why not? It says. In perhaps one of the oddest and most shameless attempts at revenue generation, e-commerce site Amazon, they had drones delivering your packages. That was their great idea last year. This year we get the crapper coupon dispenser. <sighs> Ridiculous. They are, they are regressing. Uh, Devo, I think. Devolution. That's where they got the name. And it's happening. It says Amazon has partnered with Procter & Gamble. Proctology. Proc toilet. Yeah, I get it. To install ads in a mall restroom stalls, which will finally give restroom patrons the ability to use their smartphones to get coupons on toiletries like, um, toilet paper. Coupons to save money. Do you have any, I'm never using your phone. Do you have any idea, the, the, the bacteria will just, you'll be able to see your phone walk when you're done with this. It says, once you sit down in one of the stalls that Today Show explains, an ad wrapping the back of the door invites you to download the Amazon app prior to washing your hands and displays the barcodes for coupons for several bathroom appropriate items. You can use the app to scan the barcodes and place your order. Now, I know I know where this is going to go. You're going to be able to look up porn on the bathroom, and when that happens, I'll never use a public restroom again. I can see it coming. I can see it that there'll be ads for porn and like it'll start with like ladies lingerie and men will be in the bathroom longer than women this is a leading down the slippery slope friends it says the ads are set to hit mall bathrooms in the trendiest in new york los angeles philadelphia and seattle areas <laughs> It does miss the point that not many of us, it says, want to spend time in, time in filthy public restrooms. How filthy? One study found thousands of species of bacteria, there's a link on here, living on multiple commonly touched restroom surfaces such as door and toilet handles and toilet seats. So Amazon wants you to use your phone while you're on the crapper. And uh, again, it talks about the worst ad campaign ever was in Germany last year, Sky Deutschland. Create, devised a way to broadcast commercials and other announcements directly into train passengers' heads as they leaned against the window. They'd hear voices talking to them. Um, real great for the schizophrenic community. And you might laugh, but if you go on buses, you realize it's one of the only ways many of them have to get around. That's going to help them a lot. That won't trigger anything. Um, I'm going to zip through these because I've got too many dumpties to actually get to. But Christelle has instructed me that she wants you to leave comments. Is the Amazon crapper coupon idea a good idea, or is it a dreadful idea? I'm in for dreadful. I, I am in for dreadful. I think it's a good idea, especially if they have the coupons 
Some people are more desperate for money than others. And by the way, my phone's too slow to carry that app. Thank you to scan the barcode. Get the barcode for hand sanitizer. Guys, Buzzfeed, buzzfeed.com. San Jose cop placed on administrative leave after his tweets threatening tweets, after leaving his threatening tweet to protesters. Basically, the cop made threats online and now it left a nice paper trail for himself. It says, um, he sent the tweet out to civil rights protesters. It says, by the way, if anyone feels that they can't breathe, that's Eric Garner uh, reference, or their lives matter, we'll be at uh, movies tonight off duty carrying my gun. Officer Philip Wright tweeted on Saturday night, basically trying to egg people on when uh, people, uh, innocent cops are getting shot every day because of the actions of a few idiots. Um, we also have, uh, again, I'm zipping through these. I'm saving only the stupidest and most dumb. They're coming up, and it's mind-blowing. We're talking off-the-chart stupidity. Even dumber than the WH Science Advisor makes CO2 emissions close to zero. Yeah, never mind the fact that this would shut down the globe. Industry would come to a crawl, and we would all be pretty much Amish. Uh, science advisor John Holdren says the global goal is to have worldwide carbon dioxide emissions close to zero by 2100. He said that will not be easy. <laughs> it's like a Mad Max movie. What's it going to be like in 2000 years? Oh, we're all going to have jetpacks. BS! We were promised jetpacks ages ago. They never came. There's like a Mad Max future here uh, where, uh, you know, we have no carbon emissions and everyone's living off of grass. Uh, you can laugh, but North Korea is literally, uh, there are places where there isn't grass growing because the people are so hungry they've eaten the grass. That's going to be all of us. Infowars has this one. PJ dub Paul Joseph Watson. TV host reported to police for hate crime for asking why a person is fat. That's right. Call the police. Call the police. If only I could talk a little more like Paul Joseph Watson, but the English accent I do isn't anything close to the one that he has. A British TV host has reported to police for committing a hate crime after she asked a fat woman why she became so large during a recording of the show about weight loss. Yeah, God forbid the host do her job. Why did you get so heavy so that listeners can hear your story? Maybe they won't just look at you and say, oh boy, she's fat, she's lazy. Maybe it was a medical condition. No, nope. she asked that question because she hated you. See, that's the way these people get on my show, by being stupider than everyone else. And I'm not breezing through anymore because these are all too stupid to be breezed through. You have got to be all ears. Incoming. Mikhail Phelan, who always finds me the most awesome dumdies. Teacher forces eight-year-old to unclog the toilet with bare hands. Now, how angry would that's you... That's nasty. That is... This is this is the same kid that's going to grow up and use his phone in the bathroom. I just know it. Um, <laughs> a teacher who forced an eight-year-old student to unclog a toilet with his bare hands will remain employed despite a history of inappropriate behavior with children. Brent Taylor, teacher at Scootney Springs Elementary School in Othello, Washington, admitted to making his student put his hands inside the toilet after the third grader alerted his parents to the incident. Artie Adams, father of the young boy, says he learned of the matter after asking his son how school went that day. How did school go, son? I know, it went okay. I had to clean out a toilet with my hands. <laughs> He said everything was good, but my teacher made me put my hand inside the toilet. Artie explained to KEPR-TV, we were like, what? Artie's wife, Lisa, was equally shocked at the news, and she says she's still speechless. According to reports, the third grader had reported the clogged toilet to his teacher before being asked to unclog it without gloves or a plunger. It's nothing I haven't done, Taylor repeatedly told his students. Oh, God, I hope he makes brownies for the class. That's wonderful news. Lisa says her son was not only forced to engage in the unsanitary act, but forced to do it in front of fellow students as well. The incident was so traumatic for the young boy that Artie and Lisa have since transferred him to a new school. He did get made fun of kids that saw that happen, and he's not going back to that school, Lisa said. 
And this is somebody that only received a warning letter for his behavior. The kid didn't do it on purpose. It wasn't, I mean, you could, you, not justifying it had been, but you could at least see if the kid had been a brat and he was being awful and, you know, was deliberately clogging it. At least you could see the motive. This was just a teacher without a brain on his, in his skull. It says in the 16 month investigation into the record, we found Taylor has had two reprimands. The other two involve inappropriately touching female high school students. Uh, records show Taylor was put on leave last year after the teacher's aide reported that he roughly grabbed her in anger. So, I mean, ugh, you gotta wonder, people. You gotta wonder if it's possible for people to even use their brains to think anymore. Friends, there's three stories left. Three of the dumbest people you've ever seen. Bam, 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 coming right in a row. And they're brought to you by Mike McLaughlin. You can go to Facebook.com and look up the works of Mike McLaughlin. Let him know you heard about it from Sam at the Correct Views. And uh, tell him I sent you. Be prepared to read great fiction, uh, well-thought-out story, plotline twists, all of it. Kit Daniels, PrisonPlanet.com, college professor, repeal the stupid Second Amendment. Now, keep in mind, as uh, at least one or two of you will know, that uh, probably non-Usher fans, rights are given to us by God. Remember reading that in the Constitution? Granted to you by the Creator. Or at least, uh, for you Darwinists, granted to you by the fact that you are a breathing person. A college professor is calling for the repeal of the Second Amendment, which was granted to you by God which underscores how many academics and Common Core consider the Bill of Rights obsolete, as have some of the greatest tyrants in history. Tom H. Hastings, a conflict resolution lecturer at Portland State University, recently claimed it's long past time to repeal the stupid Second Amendment in an op-ed in the Wisconsin Gazette. Of course, and all and once you take the guns off the criminals, I mean off the, the regular people, the criminals are going to turn theirs in too. Because they made drugs illegal and Christelle, guess what happened? Nobody used drugs anymore. Oh, <laughs> well, maybe not. Repeal the Second Amendment, he wrote. Surround it, grab it, bring it into the back room, pull down the shades, and end it. Yeah, that's a great analogy. That makes me want to join. Okay, petition for it. Get it on the ballot, but get it done by enough of the U.S. populace, by enough people in enough states to get it co-signed to the dustbin of history. Uh, if he gets his way, you'll find, like, every criminal in the world will vote. Immediately. Yes, let this happen, please. So we're going to leave ourselves without any ability to defend ourselves at all. We're going to have... Uh, uh, going to the convenience store, someone's going to rob us and we're going to pull out a slingshot. It says his statements reflect the emerging attitude among academics for the disregard of the Bill of Rights and the Constitution, an att attitude toward turning college classes into extensions of common core. Let's just take other amendments away. You know, why, why should women be allowed to vote? Let's bring back slavery and eliminate the right to free speech. Let's get rid of that whole not incriminating yourself thing and that right to remain silent out the door. What an idiot. God-given rights, inalienable. Ron Paul gives some logic here. Uh, love Ron Paul. I believe those who think they're superior want the population, that is the populace, to be as obedient as possible in case they need to send them off to war, in case they want them to work and pay taxes, former Congressman Dr. Ron Paul said in an interview regarding, regarding Common Core. The whole thing is that the state is scared. And in order to have a state, the government continue to grow is always at the expense of liberty. In other words, dumb you down, make you stupid, and then come up with these wonderful solutions to problems. I know somebody that got shot. If we'd have taken the Second Amendment away, he wouldn't have been shotted. Kid Daniels gave me one more. This is the runner-up for the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. This is not the stupidest, but it's really close. Harvard professor, rape law classes no longer taught due to feminist outrage. I thought I had more stories than this. It's now almost impossible for law professors to teach legal courses on rape and sexual violence due to a backlash from feminist groups, a Harvard law professor said. 
end rape culture. This person's holding a sign that says end rape culture. The only rape culture I know could arguably be found in the most popular hip-hop songs. You will find more derogatory statements given towards women in your average rap song than you will in the entire death metal collection of obituary. Janie Souk, who's been teaching at Harvard Law School since 2006, said campus organizations representing women's interests are advising students not to participate in or even attend class sessions that focus on sexual violence because the laws, because they might be traumatic. Therefore, you're going to have a whole bunch of Harvard Law School students that ditched when they went over the part dealing with rape law. You're going to have a whole bunch of attorneys that don't even know what rape law is. You're going to have kids that weren't even raped saying they were raped just to get out of class that week. Remember the joke when someone's a mechanic and like, yeah, but I, I skipped that. I skipped the uh, section where we went over engines. It's like a long running joke. They're really going to do it. They're really going to do it. They're going to graduate lawyers that were allowed to skip any section of the law that taught them what rape law was because hearing about a rape if they were through one might be traumatic. What are they going to do the first time they hear it in court? Bust down crying and lose the case? These organizations also ask criminal law teachers to warn their classes that the rape law unit might trigger traumatic memory, she wrote in the New Yorker. Never mind the fact that a lot of women get into law so that they can prosecute rapists. <sighs> After they were raped, individual students often ask teachers not to include the law of rape on exams for fear that the material would cause them to perform less well. I'd like to make comments, but it's so stupid it speaks for itself. One teacher I know, it says, was recently asked by a student not to use the word violate in class, as it does this, as in does this conduct, conduct violate the law, because the word was triggering. So use break. Well, they might not want to use break because during the rape something might have been broken. So I don't know what you're supposed to use. Some students have even suggested that rape law should not be taught because of its potential to cause distress. Yeah, don't know what your rights are, and you won't even know. <laughs> oh, my God. What? Souk said this turn of events is similar to the second rape argument by feminists of the 70s and 80s who claimed that making rape complaints undergo routine cross-examination in court would traumatize them more than the rape itself. In other words, what they want, listen to this, what they want is for a woman to be able to accuse, well, in this day and age, a person to be able to accuse any other person of raping them, but then they don't even want to have to go to court and say what was done because it might be too traumatic. In other words, be where the finger points is the dude that gets jailed or the girl that gets jailed or the something in between that gets jailed. We won't go there. It says, uh, scaring professors from teaching rape law, feminists are going to allow rapists to avoid justice because an entire generation of lawyers and legal experts are going to be completely clueless about the legalities surrounding sexual violence. It's routine for the feminist movement to ignore genuine atrocities against women while focusing on completely trivial issues because the movement was hijacked in the 1950s by the CIA and others, with others within the political elite to exploit women and corrupt gender roles. That's exactly what they want. Last month, feminists demanded the censorship of Princess Leia catcalling videos, which was a parody of a feminist video being shown and catcalled in New York. How about this manspreading issue? As uh, Christelle finishes her dunce cap that she designs every month. Manspreading. Where, where, because seats are only 17 inches wide, men will sit with their a V-shape when they're just sitting down. Feminists are trying to get that barred. You could be thrown off a train. It's called manspreading. I wish that their mother hadn't spread because then they wouldn't have ever been here. I'm sorry, people, but stupidity is everywhere, man. Yes, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I just wish they were smarter. And that brings us, friends, to the dunce cap of the month winner. Oh, yeah. What was the stupidest? What was the stupidest thing I've seen all month? This might win the dunce cap of the year. And uh, I, I, 
definitely need to uh, get my names for that when we're done, Christelle. All right, friends. Paul Joseph Watson. Here we go. Gun control advocate urges kids to inform on parents and turn in their firearms. Perfectly legal firearms are to be turned in here at 420. Are to be turned in by children. The child is to take the gun to school. According to this bonehead. I'm telling you, we might, Christelle, have started off the entire year with the dunce cap of the year for next year. After the hat, I need you to get the all the names for the drawing. A gun control advocate is attracting controversy after she released a PSA video encouraging children to inform on their parents by stealing their firearms and bringing them to school, an act that would result in numerous felony charges. Imagine getting a call at school that the SWAT team has been called to your child's school. So you go rushing to this school and there's helicopters and the media is there and the police are all over because Junior was told on TV to bring his father's legally owned gun to school. The video, which is the work of director Regina Sinsick, it looks like Regina, which sounds like, uh, we're not going to go there, of Regina Productions, shows a nervous boy sneaking up to his parents' bedroom before rifling through, nice word, his mother's drawer and taking out a handgun, which he stuffs into his backpack. Absolutely no chance that he could shoot himself. No, the boy takes the gun, of which he had no training to handle in some instances, to school and places it on the desk of his astonished teacher before stating, Can you take this away? I don't feel safe with a gun in my house. Our children deserve a safe world. Stop gun violence now, reads the message at the end of the clip. In conjoining children to steal their parents' firearms, it goes on and turn them into school officials. The video not only implies that gun ownership is a form of child abuse, it's your God-given right, it also encourages children to commit numerous felonies, according to BearingArms.com. Quote, in the real world, such an act would result in the boy facing numerous felony charges. Exact charges depend on state laws, of course. Possibly including weapons theft, unlawful possession of a weapon by a minor, I forgot that one, illegal concealed carry of a weapon, carrying a weapon onto school property, assault, and brandishing. He would face the possibility of a felony criminal record, yeah, that'll help you when you get out of school, and mandatory expulsion from school, well, that'll help you too. And this is the kind of behavior that deranged gun control supporter Sinsic is supporting the children emulate. This is literally worse for the child than unsupervised hip-hop listening. Uh, notice I, I, I said unsupervised. Um, I grew up, I, Ozzy was biting heads off of bats. At some point, my dad was wise enough to say, hey, he likes this. Maybe I should tell him that Black Sabbath was a horror movie so that he doesn't think he needs to go out and drink goat's blood. Guess what? Today, number of glasses of goat's drink, blood drank zero. On the second year anniversary... I really? On the second year anniversary of Sandy Hook, the notion of kids brandishing guns in schools brings with it a series of potentially disastrous consequences that have been completely overlooked. And there's a bunch of tweets regarding it. I'll just pick one. Thank you for making the worst gun control PSA in the history of the world. Guns save lives every day. I'm going to read a couple. These are funny. You're encouraging a minimum of four felonies and a significant risk of negligent discharge hurting, killing someone. Uh, you better hope nobody gets hurt because of you. Someone, you're encouraging teens to steal weapons and turn them in at the school and become dumb felons. You are a effing stupid. And here we go, friends. That means as Christelle finishes up the hat, then I'm going to read you the award. Here it is. It's not yet trimmed. Low deaf viewers. And then after I read this, don't tune out because if you voted on Dunce Cap of the Year, I'll be pulling your name out. You're about to win a uh, autographed passing time CD and your favorite charity promoted for a month. 
the dunce cap of the month award this is going to be sent to our regina productions along with the dunce cap that you hear her uh, making in the back it says the dunce cap of the month award it takes a special breed of stupidity to honestly stand out in today's ultra brainless world but you challenge souls at regina productions have done just that by encouraging children to commit a number of offenses some of them on the federal level by asking children to turn in guns i mockingly wrote you have signed them up for accidental shootings the misplacing of the weapon and crimes such as but not limited to theft terrorism and any of a myriad of laws aimed against carrying a gun for any reason on school grounds it is not every day i wrote that a public service announcement can utterly destroy a child's life but then again it is not every day that someone is as stupid as regina suchi friends you're listening to the correct views and it's time to for us to do our great drawing and Christelle is mostly done with her hat. We're going to have to show it as is. She's making it as we go. Well, you did everything, but she's got everything but the stick figures colored in. All right, guys. Dunce. It says, insert head here for political satire only. Christelle. Little stick figure. Wait, let me show it real good for people on the... And again, it's going to be colored in where it is not yet colored in. She makes these monthly, and we send them. We re- I've sent these to the FBI. We've sent them everywhere. Day of school. Why does Bob always get away with cheating? Night after school. Mommy and Daddy has a gun. I should turn it in. Two. I'm grounded for cheating on that test. Bob didn't get caught. Next day of school. Why did I bring? Why did you bring a gun? You're suspended. But I was just turning it in. There's the little the little figurine. Again, there are other things we could have done, but we didn't want to draw blown up children. We're not sadistic to prove a point. Stick figures work. Nobody got shot. Christel, that is a great hat. All right, friends, it is time for the drawing. It's in the top drawer, my dear. It uh, it's on little uh, scraps of paper and the uh, the envelope. It's time for you guys to pick the dunce cap of the year. Once a year, somebody that's already received the dunce cap and the uh, certificate get a special award. They get chosen by the listeners as the stupidest story of last year. And I've taken all the votes and we are now going to pick the winner. I can tell you. I can tell you this up front. But yeah, she goes together. I can tell you this up front. I was interested in seeing exactly how many of these we were gonna get. For some reason, people were uh, choosing in in the wrong section to vote in. I th- I think that I've gotten everybody's vote. I hope that I've gotten everybody's vote. And when she brings it up, we are going to uh, zip right into choosing the name out of the hat. For those of you waiting and have already... Well, I'm only, right now, I'm only talking to the people that are in this. Everybody else is like, I ain't paying no attention. For those uh, waiting to see if you've won, yeah, I we do things as quickly as we can here. We really do. But sometimes, you know what? You just get backed up. So the dunce cap of the year and the winner is set to be chosen as soon as Christelle comes back up. And again, we had a lot, a lot of dumb stories, especially when you look back. I mean, there were 12 of them that went out. And we, we had judges that told a living man that he was dead and would not give him his name back. Um, that was Winkle John's pick. Uh, what else did we have? I think the, the FBI ICP thing was last year. It's never ending. And if you're going to be asking, why do we do these shows? Why do I spend money to send Dunce Caps caps out every single month? Well, I can tell you why. Because the U.S. Patent Office awarded a white background and a light as a patent. As in, as in like other photographers throughout all of history haven't been using this very same thing. All right, we are going to go ahead. Um, I'm going to number, they are numbered, they're written down here, it's perfect. They are numbered, and I want number four. What is number four, Christelle? I just picked a number. 
That one. The Department of Energy for Mike. Oh, Mike McLaughlin won, the show sponsor. Mike McLaughlin for the Department of Energy. Ones, they win the dunce cap of the year for their stupidity. There you go, friends. Mike McLaughlin, you get an autographed passing. Yours is going to have to be an autographed passing time DVD. I didn't expect someone to win that I knew. Uh, we'll give you the videos. And uh, he, he's the one who the, bought the printer. He's a sponsor of the show. Way to go, Mike. G uh, good night, friends. God bless. And thanks for listening. Kill that, my dear.